Hey guys, yes, yes, yes. Welcome to another Lip YouTube channel. Welcome if you're new and welcome if you're not. Today we are talking about Essex County Jail. We're talking Casanova. We're talking about Casanova being slashed in the face. We're talking about how dangerous this facility is. We're going to talk about everything. Let's get into the video, guys. Casanova, Casanova as you, you guys probably, probably know by now, now, has been having a really terrible legal battle. So we're going to talk about where the charges actually came from. So... Casanova was allegedly at a club with Gerald, JC Chrysler Jr. They were at the club and a rival gang member basically seen Casanova throwing up gang signs. And apparently the guy yelled to him, yelled out to Casanova like, yo homie, wrong sign. Casanova then apparently responded, what, you want to die tonight? And then after they exchanged some words, the gang member was actually shot. He was shot and so was another person. And the allegation was that Casanova and Chrysler actually were responsible for the shooting. The victims were um, taken to the hospital and they were treated for um, bullet wounds. So that is basically where the attempted murder charge come from. The reason authorities claim that, you know, Casanova uh, was actually involved is because there was messages allegedly in Chrysler's phone and there was text messages between him and Casanova, which were basically incriminating. They were apparently bragging about the shooting. It's like, you know, when they say that, like, you know, some people be doing killings and then they be rapping and bragging about the killing in their song. They were basically saying this was going on. They were bragging down the text messages. And that's basically where the attempted murder charge comes from and the assault with a deadly weapon. Also, racketeering is a charge. Racketeering is one of the major charges conspiracy to distribute controlled substances and possession of a firearm um, in occurrence to do with drug trafficking crime. Casanova, who's, you know, from Brooklyn, he obviously, you know, denies the charges. No one would admit it, even if they did do it, but he denied the charges. You know, he made an announcement at one point. He had said, like, I've been incarcerated for almost one year now at Source Kid or Remedies. He spent a significant amount of money on legal fees to prove my innocence. And, you know, these charges against me, he said, are false. They don't represent or reflect the person that I am. They're just using my past criminal history to crucify me in court. He then talked about, you know, just kind of like charity and community work he does. Like, you know, he said he's the guy. He goes to City Hall. He does housing projects. He speaks to kids about shootings, gun violence and how they shouldn't do it. He's been to shelters. He's visited around the world, places where there's poverty, like Africa. He's donated to school drives. And he said that none of his, like, good stuff he does are really acknowledged. He said you know, no one really acknowledges the things he's done. That he's basically saying he's a reformed person. He's absolutely changed. Now, Casanova, you know, when the FBI wanted him, he actually surrendered himself to the FBI. He went there, he surrendered himself, you know, to face the charges. They're trying to do drug charges on him and racketeering. Um, also, they were also, in 2020, you know, running these charges on 17 other members of the untouchable Guerrilla Stone Nation gang, which they allege he is, was part of. Um, a judge ruled that Casanova was a danger to the public. He was a danger to the public and he, he wouldn't give him bail. Um... So Casanova in May decided to plead guilty to one of the counts that he's facing. He decided to, you know, plead guilty to conducting um, affairs of criminal enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. And he also conspiring. admitted to one count of conspiring to distribute over 100 kilograms of marijuana. I'm surprised he actually pled guilty to any of these charges because the charges are so serious. He may have felt that there was so much evidence that against him or he just had no chance of winning or his sentence would just be reduced if he admitted to the charges because these charges are so serious and the length of prison he faces is so long. They want him in jail for a very, very, very long time, up to 60 years. That's a long time. Now, Essex County Jail is such a serious and dangerous place to be. And I'm going to tell you a story about a guy who was in here. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because it connects up to what happened to Casanova next. So there was this guy. He was a young, young guy. He was only 22 years old and he was schizophrenic. He was in Essex County Jail. Okay, he was in the facility. 
and basically what happened to him is he was severely beaten in this facility by a prison gang. They threw a microwave on this poor boy's head. His brain injury was so severe he could not walk. He had no short-term memory anymore. He could not eat solid food. This poor 22-year-old guy, this happened to him while he was in the prison. You know, there's a video out there. Some of you guys may have seen it. Obviously, I'm not going to put it on this platform. But it's a terrible video. Inmates punched this poor boy. They hit him with the mop, industrial mop. They hit him with a microwave. They punch him and they stomp on him. This poor boy was left in a coma for three months. He has a severe brain injury and he will not be able to walk or eat solid food on his own. This is how bad this prison is. You know, the poor boy has lost his short-term memory. So to a degree, it's good in terms of he don't recall the beating. But this is terrible what happened to him, basically. And... Um, you know, at the time, this poor boy, Jay Sean Boyd, he was actually in prison because he was on trial for a criminal mischief and unlawful possession of a knife charges. But please remember, he did not belong in a gang. The family said he was not a gang member. And remember, he's actually schizophrenic. So this is probably how we ended up in this position. He's actually mentally ill. So this prison is extremely, extremely dangerous. If this can happen to a 22-year-old boy in the prison who is, bear in mind, mentally ill, so he's an unwell 22-year-old, I mean, with what was wrong with him in terms of his schizophrenia, him being young, he should have actually been, in my opinion, in a medical facility because what happens a lot of the time is people with, you know, mental illnesses like schizophrenia, they're not actually, you know, taken care of properly and, you know, they're not given the right support they need to help them with their mental illness and then things like this occur but you know the fact that he was beaten in this prison to this extent tells you a lot about this prison the fact that a boy can be beaten by seven inmates while in jail is absolutely terrible it took two minutes and 11 seconds before guards even acted to help you know, this poor, poor boy. And what I would like to say is this prison is extremely dangerous. You know, there's been a lot of riots, you know, and people just, you know, protesting to try and, you know, do something about this prison because this prison is really, really, really actually dangerous. And, you know, it's shocking to me that there's still incidents happening within this prison after something so serious has already happened in here. There's been many, many cases of assaults that have been reported in this jail and Casanova, unfortunately, has become a victim. He decided to denounce his gang affiliation during a court hearing and he has unfortunately had his face slashed. Yep, that's what's happened to him because he doesn't want to be in this, you know, crazy gang activity. He doesn't want to be a part of this gang you know, he wants to probably have a life. He wants to do more of his life than be associated with this gang. Look where it's gone to his life. Look at the trouble it has put him in. And this is what has happened, you know, within this jail. And as I said, this jail seems to be absolutely out of control. Apparently, Casanova, his face was slashed by inmate Logo. And basically, after his face was slashed, Casanova and a group of men then apparently chased Lugo down and they decided to do it back to him. They slashed Lugo several times in the face and that is when officers decided to get to the scene. Both Logo and Casanova were both covered in blood. It was a terrible, terrible prison fight. And the thing about these prison fights is I'm sure both of them will be like, they don't know who done it to them because, you know, the no-snitch policy that comes off the street is very, very strong in jail, much stronger in jail than it is on, is on the street. It seems like, you know, once you're involved in gang life and gang activity, you just can't escape it. I don't get how these inmates get to be in prison just fighting, slashing people with weapons, taking drugs, committing more crimes. I mean, surely, you know, yes, they're criminals, there's criminals in the jail, but this should be one of the safest places you were in because you've got officers there 24-7. So this sort of thing should never be happening. But, you know, jail is terrible and 
it's out of control and the amount of laws that are broke while in jail is actually crazy to me because you would think, you know, they would feel like they're being watched 24-7 with cameras, with staff, but there's a lot of corruption in the jail system, which means, you know, a lot of people are able to do more crimes and, you know, do terrible things while in jail, just as many terrible things, if not more than they were doing on the street. Casanova, I believe, is due to be back in court on the 27th of June. You know, it seems to me like, you know, you can get the rap career, you can get your bag up, things can seem like they're going better for you, but you just can't escape the, the street life when you come from it. That's what it feels like. It's always another rapper being charged with another crime. People like Sugar Knight, he's been in prison for so long. Like, it's a constant thing where, you know, rappers, you know, escape the hood but still end up in jail. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another one.